You're watching the Auction Network. For more than 25 years, Stephen Schofield has been manning the auction block in New Hampshire and the greater New England area. We paid a visit to the Hall of Fame auctioneer to see what makes him a royal member of the auction family. We were collectors and we went to a lot of antique auctions. I was a teacher so of course I had the summers off and what happened was we went to three auctions in a row one weekend, a morning, an evening and another morning, auctioneers we'd never been to before and all of them were terrible. And so I turn to my wife at the third auction and I say, I could do a better job than these guys and she turns back and she dares me. Three weeks later I'm in Kansas City at Missouri Auction School. Two years later, I quit teaching and I became a full-time auctioneer. She still can't believe she did that and that I actually pulled the whole thing off. The very first thing that I sold in auction school was I had to stand online for three hours. We were the auction school was in Kansas City, and we started class on Monday. On Wednesday night, they had us going out to a series of auctions where we go out every night. Well, I drove two hours with some guys from auction school out to Topeka, Kansas, to an auction barn somewhere in cow country. I couldn't tell you where it was, where the farm was, or where this auction gallery was. I waited in line for three hours to sell my five items. And at 11 o'clock at night, I get on the auction block, they hand me the microphone, and the runner walks up with a box of kids clothes and he pulls out a pair of child's short pants that were cut off and ratty and I got 50 cents for that box and I said it's all uphill. I think they felt bad about me in the crowd but it was, it's been all uphill ever since that one. I've sold lots of real estate for over a million dollars and none of it really stands out. About five or so years ago I was doing some work for the Marshall Service right here in Boston it was a seizure sale. It was a notorious criminal in this area. They had seized some property. It was a number of condos, three open air parking spaces. And at the time, I had established a world's record at auction for selling a parking space. Literally painted lines on the ground in a parking lot for $187,000. Schofield specializes in benefit auctions which are one of the fastest growing types of auctions in the industry today. Every event is so unique and so different. The venues, the room, the way the sound system is, the politics of the organization, who's on the committee, and what we're going to be selling, and the timeline of the event are so different from night to night or event to event. If you're selling real estate, it may take you five or ten minutes to sell that house. If you're selling antiques, you may be selling 60 to 120 items per hour. When I sell rare coins, I'm selling it over 200 lots per hour. But at a benefit sale, I'm selling one item every two to two and a half, maybe three minutes, depending upon how I'm playing with the crowd. Because you've got to get them involved. They don't know they want to bid. And they also uh, are not used to the auctioneer's chance. So you have to back off and you have to make sure they understand everything you're saying and all your numbers. In a benefit sale, the vast majority of the attendees have never or very rarely attend an auction. So your style of selling, especially during the evening after they've had several drinks, possibly, they're relaxed, they're schmoozing with their friends, and the auction is just part of the entire social fundraising evening and so your style of selling has to be completely different and your psychology of working with the crowd has to be completely different than if you had an entire professional group of buyers with their tire kickers sometimes and they're trying to get things as inexpensively as possible whereas with a not profit or a fundraising group, you're getting people supporting the organization and they may want to spend a whole lot of money to buy that unusual or unique item. A former teacher, Schofield utilizes some of the same techniques that he used in the classroom to entertain and interact with an auction audience. Teaching and being an auctioneer are really similar in terms of the kinds of professions that you're doing. As a teacher, you're always trying to convince people they want to learn stuff they don't care about. 
As an auctioneer, you want them to buy things they may not be interested in spending their money on. So the psychology of being in front of a group of people, getting them to work with you, not creating a barrier, but breaking the barrier down, we're in this together, we have to have a good time, I have a job to do and you have no choice, and it seems to work. I still love to teach. For a number of years I had the honor of teaching the ethics class at the Certified Auctioneers Institute. And I just, God, do I miss teaching. But I love auctioneering so much. Schofield has enjoyed a long list of accomplishments in his career. The crown jewel was his induction into the National Auctioneers Association Hall of Fame. I was completely and totally stunned and flabbergasted because along the way in my political career at the National Association, the Certified Auctioneers Institute and the Auction Marketing Institute, I had made some political friends and I'd also made some, there were a number of political adversaries along the way and I had said along, I'll never get in, nobody will elect me <laughs> because of the things I'd said, the stances that I had taken and the positions that I had established. But everybody saw through that and they said, well, even though he can be at times a pain in the rear, we think that he's deserving of getting in. My good friend Dick Keenan from Maine, who is doing the induction speech for the next eligible person, says, ladies and gentlemen, our next inductee grew up in the shadows of the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center. Now, this is less than two years after 9-11. And I turn to my wife and I say, who the heck from New York is getting inducted? She says, I don't know, I guess we'll have to listen and find out. Now, mind you, everybody at my table knew that I was getting in, but me. And when I finally figured out that I was the one being inducted, I started shaking my head going, it can't be me, it is me, it can't be me. I have to go up there and say something. Oh my God. <laughs> it's a very, very humbling, humbling. I could laugh now, but at the time it was like I was shaking, absolutely shaking. But just the idea that, that as an auctioneer you never know what's going to come your way and how you're going to touch history and how you may affect people. It's wonderful. We hope you enjoyed our in-depth look at one of the auction industry's most distinguished members. We'll see you next time. To register for future live auctions, go to auctionnetwork.com.